Okay. Um, so one important component when we talk about achieving high quality machine translation um, is being able to measure uh, the quality of machine translation using metrics such as uh, the one Arl has just mentioned, but also being able to do it automatically so that we can support um, end users, say professional translators who want to post edit machine translations and we can filter the bad cases such that, so that they don't have to read low quality translations. Um, but also we can support developers by diagnosing, automatically diagnosing problems in machine translations such that we can improve MT systems. So this is what I'm covering in this talk, um, the set of metrics that we call quality estimation. Um, so these are automatic metrics that attempt to estimate, and I don't use the word measure here, but it's, it's a prediction problem, so we sort of estimate automatically what would be the quality of um, a given translated text um, it could be human translation as well, but we're focusing on machine translation for now. Um, and this is different from standard evaluation metrics that you might have heard of, such as Blue or NIST, because we don't have access to reference translations here. We only have the input text and the output text, the translation. <coughs> so this is um, the set of metrics is uh, suited for production, production time, when you, you basically don't have access to previously created translations. Um, and quality here is defined in the way you want, basically based on the problem at hand. Um, I'll give you some examples, um, but they're mostly task-based definitions, so in line with what I was saying. Um, so quality according to a certain specification. Um, so one example is um, a binary decision, using these metrics for binary decision um, of whether um, translation needs revision or it can be, or it's already good enough already has human translation quality, for example. Another example is for um, um, an end user who can't read the source text, so can the reader get the gist of the text without reading the input text, um, or how much effort it would be required to fix a translation. Um, so just to give you an idea of what, what I mean by quality estimation metrics, so we have a framework which is um, also one of the tools we provide as part of this project, it's called Quest. And we provide as input to this framework um, examples of translations and uh, of input text and translations, which would be um, the top yellow um, box there. And we also provide labels for these examples, labels that somehow indicate the quality of these examples. They could be, for example, post editing time or a given accuracy uh, score in a one to five point scale, for example, or fluency or whatever you mean by quality. Um, we extract a number of um, features or descriptors of, potentially descriptors of, cap, uh, of quality for these uh, examples. Um, and then we apply some algorithms to basically learn a model um, that combines these different uh, types of information together and assigns weights to them. And at the end we have the red box there, which is a quality estimation model. It's a prediction model. And once we have that, and this is built based on these examples, um, and there is a human input there, uh, humans give these quality labels. Um, once we have this model built, we can use it to predict translation quality for any new sentence or segment, depending on the level of uh, granularity that you're working with here. Could be a sentence, could be a text, could be done at the word level, at the phrase level, whatever level. So we get ideally the same empty system producing translations for new texts, for unseen texts, and then we apply the same uh, feature extraction process. Um, we use the model we built before, and we get a quality prediction at the end. So um, this is just connecting a little, bit, a little bit better with this notion of quality again. So there are two main ways in which we represent quality in this framework. One is through the labels, as I said before. Um, Post-editing time could be a type of label, the one the example I'm giving here is um, sort of a subjective uh, post-editing effort judgment that a human would give um, from one to five, where one is this translation is uh, rubbish, throw it away, and five it's either perfect or near perfect. And then there's other uh, things in the middle which basically indicate how much, um, what the percentage of words would need to be post-edited to fix the translation. Um, so the labels are scores from one to five in this case. And the other, um, sort of source of information for quality are these features that we extract from the input text and the translations. And um, I'll give you just an overview of what these things are. Um, they come from, as I said, from different 
uh, parts of the text, some come from the input text, so if you can automatically extract some information that indicates, indicates how difficult it is to translate the text, that has an impact on the output uh, translation that we get from an empty system. And we, we all know that, for example, the length of the sentence, um, the ambiguity of the words in the sentence, how many possible translations they have, and so on. And we also take information from, obviously, from the translation itself. So we look at um, how fluent it is, how grammatical, how many untranslated words it has, um, and other things. We also take information from the empty system if we have access to it. Um, if it's an SMT or a statistical system, we can take the scores that the model produces, for example, which somehow indicate how confident the empty system is in the translation that it produces. And we can also combine information from the source and the translation text to um, try and, and count things that somehow correlate to adequacy, like whether if you have a bilingual terminology, whether the terms are being translated correctly. And we put loads of these things together, hundreds of this if we want, we can have a, this is all um, done automatically as I said, and they are all um, sort of approximations to what we would be counting if we had humans doing it. So that's why we have many of them. And these are some examples of um, what we provide as input and what we get as output of this framework. In this case, we are annotating what we have at uh, model building time are humans giving scores from one to five, like the example I gave before. Um, in the first column there, we have in red three scores that are given by three different professional translators. There's some disagreement there, and this is normal and expected. This is a sort of subjective judgment. Um, and then we take the weighted average of these three scores, and this is the top number in the first column. So the first translation was judged by a human as being of a score 2.2, which means it's, um, it can be post-edited, but it will be a lot of work. Um, and then when we feed loads of these examples to the system and build this model, what we get as a prediction for, um, in this case, for the same sentence, we're just hiding the true label here, is what we have in the second column. Um, so it's a very close score. So this is what we get completely automatically. This is what the system is giving you, a 2.14, when a human would have said it is 2.2. So it's pretty good. And I just, I'm just showing the source MT and the post-edited data there for reference, so you know how bad it was. The blue um, segments are the ones that were different, and the MT and the version that a human would have produced for it. Um, there are, of course, cases that are where the system goes wrong. Um, so this, for example, in the first line, all humans said it was a terrible translation, and the system guessed it was a three, which is a half, well, so-so translation. Um, this is a difficult case. It's a very short sentence, so it's difficult to extract uh, relevant information from it. But on average, what we get for this particular case um, is this is just a general, an overall score to show how good the system is, and it basically says that the system deviates from what a human would say by 0.61%. If you think this is the judgments were from one to five, it means that the maximum deviation here would have been four. Um, if the system went completely wrong. Um, this is just a simplistic way of saying it. But the system goes wrong by a lot less than that. So it's sort of an acceptable um, deviation. And to show you in practice how, what the implication is of this, uh, the accuracy of the models, I'll just show two examples of where um, we've, been, we've used this in tasks. We've used this quality predictions in, in other tasks. And we can show that they, they work pretty well. So one of them is um, the prediction of, um, again, it's post-editing effort. In this case, we're predicting post-editing time. But then the way we're measuring whether the system gets it right or not is by actually taking two subsets of sentences of translations. For one of these subsets, we don't do any quality predictions, so we just give them for uh, post-edition to humans. Um, and we measure how much time they take on average to post-edit these sentences. With the other set, we do ranking of the sentences according to the predicted scores such that the, t the best quality translations would come at the top. And then we again give these translations for, for post-editing, um, post-edition to humans, and again we measure the time. So we have these two separate sets of uh, sentences. They're all very equivalent in terms of size and so on. Uh, same domain, same everything, same language pair. Translators are trained in the same way. Um, uh, actually, it's the same post-editor doing the two sets, but it, the sentences are different. 
Uh, and then we measure the av average time that is necessary to fix the translations. So what we see here is in the middle column, we have um, the average well, number of words per second without any ranking of quality. And in this, the last third column, we have the average words per second uh, with the ranking. So we, we're taking the top translations and we stop at some point because we limit the amount of time they have to do the post edition. So basically they're only post editing the good ones or the predicted to be of good quality. Um, so the numbers are higher. It means we can, they can post edit more words per second. The other example is a simpler one, is say you have multiple empty systems available, you have Google, Bing, and so on to translate the same text, and then you wanna choose the best one, um, and you might know that on average, or overall, one system is better than the other. And in this case, we had four empty systems, and one um, was the best system as judged by humans in 54% of the cases. So if you always took the translation from this um, supposedly best system, um, we would be make, making the right decision in 54% of the times. In the remaining times, the 46% of the other cases, we would be taking one translation that wasn't the best. Other system would have produced a better translation. So if instead of doing that, we use this quality estimation models to predict the quality for the four systems and then pick the one with the highest score, for every source sentence, we have four alternative translations, pick the one with the highest score, then we are able to get the best translation in 77% of the cases. So just to um, finalize the presentation, making a better connection with what Arl was presenting uh, right now, which is the connection between this automatic metrics and the multidimensional quality metrics that we've been developing in this project. So right now we, we're still estimating sort of overall quality uh, measures, both editing effort or fluency and accuracy. Um, what we're doing at the moment is to try and use the metrics that we, we have, um, the multidimensional quality metrics, to produce these labels that we have at uh, model building time uh, so that we are able to predict uh, more fine-grained metrics, so not just an overall score, but more detailed scores for, um, for the translations. Um, and we can also um, use these predictions as a way of selecting translations to be then manually uh, inspected by humans uh, in cases where this is still necessary. This is it. So I hand it to Joseph.